Hello, I am Flash Isaac and today I will be taking you through Likely Jam Use of English Questions. Before then, I will take you through a story. I actually studied engineering. Yeah, so at the University of Bini, you live there. Years ago, I was preparing for Jam as well as other students, my friend. So while I was aspiring for engineering, I have many law students, medicine students, and those going for English. Look at something. We wrote jam and the results were released. Something happened. I, st I scored higher than most of them in use of English. Now I was surprised. Most of these persons are going for English, they are going for law. When they come around and they are speaking with you, you say, hello, how are you doing? I'm fine. You know, these are persons who hardly speak pidgin. Some of them don't. So they feel, since they don't speak pidgin and they, they have sweet voices, they will score very high in English. No, that is not true. High score on that jam use of English has nothing to do with how you speak or your voice or whether you speak pidgin or not. English has rules. Rules. So when you follow these rules, you will score high. And most persons actually feel their English is correct based on general standard or what they are used to around. If you study critically, you will see that most of these English we speak are really not correct, as you will see in the questions we shall be answering. Look at something else. Use of English can be time consuming. Many persons use all the time on use of English without answering other subjects because you'll be faced with passages and you want to think and think and answer questions. This is a tip. In jump, don't start with use of English because it will waste your time. Start with other subjects and out of the remaining three, look for the one that you love best. Any question that will waste your time, you are not sure of. Instead of thinking, thinking, solving and solving over again, skip it. Go to another one. There is no time and you must not finish. Scoring high doesn't mean you must finish. No. So skip, answer the ones that you are sure of. Fast, then go to use of English, answer very fast. So I'll show you the trick to answer use of English comprehension because this is what keeps the whole time. Have to be fast about it and be very sure. So you answer the ones you are sure of. After that, then you come back to the ones you've not answered. Because you see the ones you've answered, the ones you've not answered. So just go to the ones you've not answered, try to think. And when it is remaining 5-10 minutes, just shade anything. That is it. And don't feel bad. You will score high. So long you are already sure of many. So it's better to answer the ones you are sure of than to waste time on the ones you are not sure of and not even attempting everything you are sure of. Having said that, these are the main things under use of English. Comprehension passages or summary. And uh, these days, a novel. Novels will be recommended, so you need to answer questions under those novels. I will answer questions under recommended novel in separate videos, so this will not cover novels. And don't forget, this is the part 1 of the likely questions. I'll release part 2, part 3, part 4, and 5 to make sure that no stone is left unturned. On our comprehension passages, you'll be given passages, long passages, and you'll be asked to answer questions that follow. Some of these passages can be descriptive, uh, descriptive or description. They describe something to you. Lagos is a very beautiful state. Going there, you see a lot of beautiful cars, houses, beautiful girls. The environment is noisy, it's congested, but people don't stop going to Lagos. Immediately you get to Lagos, you see a billboard. Welcome to Lagos. Now all this kind of stuff, try to describe something. Why some? They'll tell you a story. Once upon a time, up there lived a rabbit, and a dog. They were to go for a contest 
a day before the rabbit did this and the dog did that and especially stories about tortoises so these passages are usually very very sweet and interesting you want to spend the whole time reading them narration some exposition they tell you about things they expose things like youth of nowadays you can actually help them you can influence them you can help their career by simply advising them and guiding them so they bring out a lot of things and facts in the society and we have argumentation these are debates this is better than this these are the reasons you should choose this instead of that so argumentation debate these are the main types of passage you will get and you see questions like according to the passage according to the author according to this according to that what is this and the comprehension passages you don't assume don't use your own wisdom for example one plus one in base 10 is equals to right but a person can say that one plus one is equals one zero then it questions one plus one is dash a two b one zero c six d seven don't answer based on what you know or the general base answer based on what is in the passage and something else about comprehension passage is some options can be half correct while some are completely correct go for the ones that are completely correct and follow the author of the writer this is why some questions we say according to the writer and some questions like from the passage it can be deduced that so that will require you to read the passage understand what is this passage about most time from the first sentence or the first paragraph you'll be able to deduce what the passage is about so i'll teach you how to answer comprehension passages very fast then lessons and structure synonyms uh closest in meaning antonyms words that are opposite in meaning uh tenses concord question type idioms and many more under lazies and structure then oral forms vowels a a e e o o u uh, consonant sounds rhymes word stress and intonation so these are the highlights of use of english so we shall be answering the use of english questions and i shall be reading from the questions i have written down here and questions from the flash learners jam cbt app it is a very helpful application you need to get one go to play store and get it or visit flashtenance.com to get the desktop version so comprehension comprehension passage now to answer comprehension passage this is the easiest way and with this method i'm about to show you you'll be so sure of your answer yes sure what is the method one read the question after reading the question analyze the question so read and analyze the question then read the options after reading the options make sure you understand each of the questions having done this go to the passage and start reading the passage immediately you get to where questions are you will know so look at this passage the first question says the expression third party as used in the passage means so this means third party was used in the passage so what does this expression mean and remember in comprehension passages you don't work with your own idea your feeling doesn't count what is right doesn't even count because passages are people's opinion so they try to describe something to narrate to expose or argumentation or they try to tell you what was said when i got there he told me that life will end tomorrow so according to the passage when is life going to end tomorrow simply shade pass your exam move on gain admission so that is it so the expression third party was used in the passage what does it mean option a says politician 
So according to the passage, does the expression third party refer to politician? B. Intruder. So third party as used in the passage. Did this refer to intruder? C. Conformist. Does it have anything to do with to conform or conformist? And D. Mediator. So third party, does it mean mediator? According to the passage, third party is required. Anytime we see third party, we need to find out what it means. And the next question says, from the passage, it can be deduced that A. All nations adopt the peaceful approach. All nations adopt the peaceful approach. So do all nations approach peace? And B says, all nations prefer the military option. Wow! Like I suggested, so it means there is a peaceful approach and there is a military option. To what actually? We will see that. And C says, prevailing circumstances push a warring nation to sue for peace. Wow! So this passage is simply about a conflict resolution. So option C, is it true that prevailing circumstances push a warring nation to sue for peace? Then option D, conflicts are noted for facilitating opportunities. Is it true that conflict facilitates opportunities according to the passage? We shall find out. So we've seen two questions to expect uh, and the options. Two questions to look out for, actually. Then the third one says, which of the following statements can be inferred from the passage? So from the passage, out of option A, B, C, and D, which one can we actually pick to say that, wow, the passage is actually referring to this, or the passage means this, or this is what this passage is talking about. Option A says, the approach to employ in conflict management depends on the state of affairs. So there are different approaches to conflict. So does the approach to use, does it, uh, does it depend on the state of affairs? Option B says, only one complete management approach can be applied in all situations. So according to the passage, is it true that only one complete, uh, conflict management approach can be used in all situations? And option C, all conflict management approach can be applied in all situations. So do all the approaches work in all the situations? And this says, there is a general disagreement among scholars on conflict management. So from the affair, uh, can we infer from the passage that there is a general disagreement among scholars on conflict management? So we shall look out for that. And the next question says, According to the passage, the different approaches to conflict management are A. Pernicious B. Uniform C. Misleading D. Fundamental So, which one is true according to the passage? And the fifth question says, the word utility as used in the passage means dash. So, utility was used in the passage. So what does utility as used in the passage mean? It doesn't have to do uh, with what it means in life or in English or whatever. So we need to follow the context, contextualization. So according to usage, what does it mean? Option A says difficulty. B, attitude. C, usefulness. D, management. So what does utility as used in the passage mean? So right now, we've gone through question number one to question number five. We've seen the questions that are asked. We've seen the option. So which one is correct? Which one is wrong? Let's go to the passage to pick them out. There are many different approaches to conflict management, each of which may have utility in particular circumstances. A great deal of scholarship has been devoted to analysis or to analyze how and in what situation different approaches can be applied most effectively. Conflict management approaches can be classified into two broad categories. Let's stop 
Let's say from beginning to where we stopped. There are many different approaches to conflict management, each of which may have utility in particular circumstances. A great deal of scholarship has been devoted to analyzing how and in what situations different approaches can be applied most effectively. You have different ways to resolve conflict. And it says, each of which may have utility in particular circumstances. This means, each of those methods, there is one of them that is very useful in particular circumstances. So at least one method will be useful in a particular circumstance. So, look at this question. The word utility as used in the passage means, it simply means usefulness, which is option C, the correct option. You can use it to replace it. There are many different approaches to conflict management, each of which may have usefulness in particular circumstances. So, we've answered that. And with that, you're not even having any doubt because we read the question, we read the options, and we are seeing the answer in the passage. 100% confidence level. So, let's continue reading. It says, Conflict management approaches can be classified into two broad categories. Firstly, on the basis of the level of escalation which the particular conflict is being managed. In this sense, one can distinguish between the peaceful and military approach. So we have different ways of conflict management. First is based on how the conflict has gotten to, how it has escalated to. And they said according in this method, we have two, which is a peaceful and military approach based on the basis of the level of escalation which the particular conflict is being managed, okay? And it says, the trademarks of peaceful approach are negotiation. So if you are using a peaceful approach, you negotiate. Please, let's settle this thing. I don't want problem. What do you want? Okay, I can offer this to you. Okay? And um, it says, per uh, verbal persuasion to persuade. Do this now. Just do it. Just listen. And subtle manipulation. Sort of the use of physical forces. So you try to manipulate. See, if you don't do this now, you may die, you, you may lose your son, or something may happen. So you are trying to manipulate the person for the conflict to be resolved. So, which, why those of the military approach relate to the use of physical coercion? So, military approach is forced. Let us fight. Let everything scatter. <laughs> okay? Now, it says the use of physical force could be a party to the conflict or third party. The use of physical force could be a party to the conflict or third party to promote on size interest, impose a settlement, or create a situation in which diplomatic negotiations can occur. Now, secondly, conflict management approaches can also be classified according to the status of the participants in the beginning process. For example, a conflict could be managed through negotiation, that is, direct bargaining by the parties involved in the conflict, or through mediation, that is, with the help of a third party. Now, <laughs> mediator is actually a third party. So, third party means mediator, someone who is standing in between to mediate. There is a question like that, which says, the expression third party as used in the passage means D is the correct option. It simply means mediator. You can still see this in the last paragraph. So it was first introduced from the ending of the second paragraph or the first paragraph, which says the use of physical force could be a party to the conflict or third party. Then the last paragraph simply told us the, what third party means. Through mediation, that is with the help of a third party. So Third party means the mediator. And look at the next question, uh, question too says, from the passage, it can be deduced that conflicts are noted for facilitating opportunities. Prevailing circumstances put a warring nation to sue for peace. No. All nations prefer military option. No. All nations adopt peaceful approach. No. The passage does not tell us that all nations adopt military or peaceful. It simply says that 
the approach to issues depends on the nature of which the conflict has escalated. So A and B are not true according to the passage, and C did not tell us that prevailing circumstances push a warring nation to sue for peace. This is an implied question, implied meaning, to just get something else. So it actually implies that conflicts are noted for facilitating opportunities. And look at the third question. From the passage, which of the following statements can be inferred from the passage? Option A is correct, which says the approach to employ in conflict management depends on the state of affairs. So it depends on the type of conflict and the state of affairs or the nation. You simply say, okay, in this conflict, this is the approach to use. It also depends on how the conflict has escalated to or the result you want. So the approach simply depends on the state of affairs, which is as explained in the passage. Option B says, only one conflict management approach can be applied in all situations. No, there are different approaches and each approach is based on the state of affairs or based on the situation on ground. And C says, all conflict management approaches can be applied in all situations. No, no. D says, there is a general agreement among scholars on conflict management. There is general disagreement. There is no disagreement. The scholar simply stated different ways conflict can be resolved. You can use peace or military, and they depend on the state of affairs, what the results that you want. So, A is correct here, and the next question says, or the fourth question, according to the passage, the different approaches to conflict management are A. Pernicious, B. Uniform, C. Misleading, D. Fundamental. Fundamental is correct. Fundamental means the different approaches to conflict management, they are important. That is the meaning of fundamental. No one is better than the other. No one is misleading. They are not uniform. So they are all important. It depends on the result you want. So you can choose to make peace. You can choose the military approach. And the passage suggests that the military approach can lead to opportunity. By the time you start to fight the brain war, the person will calm down. Because it's in a situation where you try to resolve things calmly. Oh, yeah, sorry now. The person says, forget, I'll finish you. By the time even you pull your own share to start to fight, the person will now calm down. Okay, let's negotiate. So, conflict can bring opportunity. Military approach can later lead to persuasion. They will now be third party to see, wow, you guys should be last set to resolve these things. Okay? So, that is it. And that is how to analyze passages and answer. Don't worry, in part two of the video, I will bring more passages for us to analyze and answer. So, now let's answer questions on that other parts of the use of English. The whole community has often described John as belligerent. This is under words and synonyms. Belligerent. What does belligerent mean? Belligerent means combative, ability to fight, a fighting spirit, a pushing spirit, obstructive, aggressive. That is the meaning of belligerent. And the next question. The Ministry of Education is making determined efforts to eradicate examination malpractice. A. A compulsory. B. Ineffective. C. Innocent. And D. Unreliable. So you are determined, you are pushing, you are doing everything possible to achieve your desire. That is a determined effort. Looking at the options A, B, C, and D, the word that is opposite in meaning to determined is simply ineffective. So you are not making doing enough. You are not so determined. Okay? You are not putting much to achieve your dream. So this is under words and antonyms. So ineffective is the opposite of determined as used in the sentence. And in the next question, it says, the principal flogged the gay reluctantly. A. Eagerly. B. Laboriously. C. Calmly. And D. Furiously. Reluctantly means unwilling. Unwilling to do something. Go and buy me food. Oh, okay, I will go. You are unwilling. That is what it means to be reluctant. So the opposite of 
reluctant looking at the options a b c and d is eagerly eagerly so if you are if you don't want to go the opposite will be go and get me something yes yes i'm going so you are eager to do it so reluctant means unwilling opposite is eagerly so you are eager to do something so option a is the correct option so let's look at the next question it says today's car is badly damaged he has to look for an expert mechanic to fix it this is under words and opposite his car is badly damaged he has to look for an expert an expert is underlined so what is the word opposite in meaning to expert as used in the sentence expert is someone who is good at something if i say john is an expert driver it means this guy is so good at driving he has been driving for so long and is experienced at it so looking at these options the opposite of expert is amateurish amateurish amateur or novice novice is someone who is not who doesn't know much doesn't even know uh, something but amateurish or amateur is someone a learner who is trying so the person is not an expert yet he's just coming up so the opposite of expert is amateurish looking at these options let's see the next question the school library has stopped dash dash books to students a borrowing b lending c renting and d loaning looking at borrowing and lending we are talking about the school library not the student students go to the library to borrow books to read right but the library lends book to students if this is me and this is you if i'm giving you i am lending to you if you are taking from me you are receiving you are borrowing from me so lending is a more correct option than borrowing so option b is the correct option and the next question says the proprietor of our school with his administrator dash dash expected yesterday now look at this when you see sentences like this john as well as the student in the class dash dash happy john as well as all the students in the class immediately you see john as well as all the students in the class or together with when you see things like this focus on this this is the subject so everything after as well as they are not the subject they are just the first subject so the noun here should be to follow john so john as well as all the students in the class is happy or when it is together with john together with all the students in the class is happy this is the subject in a situation where you have something like this the students comma as well as the teacher it should be a ah. so this is the subject the proprietor was expected yes today and the next question they should never have followed the mathematics teacher's advice if they had not known his reputation this means that the student dash this is under interpretation so they are giving a sentence and you are asked to interpret it in this case it says they should never have followed the mathematics teacher's advice if they had not known his reputation so what does it mean let's see the options the op option says a says they trusted the mathematics teacher and took his advice b they trusted the mathematics they trusted the mathematics teacher very much but did not need his advice c 
They knew what the other students said about the mathematics teachers and so they refused to obey him. And D, they did not know his reputation. They should never have followed the mathematics teacher's advice. This means they took the mathematics teacher's advice. They knew his reputation, so they followed the mathematics teacher's advice. And look at the next question. You are simply splitting hairs, but not able to make any important point. Splitting hairs. What does it mean to split hairs? Splitting hairs simply means um, confusing unrelated issues. Bring this issue here, bring this, bring that. So you are bringing unrelated issues. That is what it means to split hairs. So the correct option here is C, confusing unrelated issues issues and in the next question it says the solution lies in choosing between negative options the solution lies in choosing between various negative options this means there is no positive option you just have to choose between two negative options this is like saying between the devil and the red sea <laughs> so you are left with two difficult situations so to get out of the problem, you need to choose just one. So the correct option is A. The solution can be found in one of the negative options. B says the solution lies in choosing between the positive and negative. No, we are not choosing between the positive and the negative. We are choosing one of the two negative options. And B says the solutions are many. Just two solutions, so there are not many. D says the solution is a negative one. It is not really a negative one. They are both negative solutions, so we just have to pick one. So option A is correct. And the next question here. The president said that he found himself between a rock and a hard place when the press said that he had resigned. This implies that to be between the rock and the hard place, it means to have a hard decision to make. To have a hard decision to make. That is what it implies to be between the rock and a hard place. So, A says he dreamt that he was abandoned. No, 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 no. B, he thought that hard places were unsafe. Look at this. We are giving questions on that interpretation. Most times, the ones that have a literal meaning are not correct. For example, the ones that contain rock or hard place is not correct. Because most of these idioms or most of these words, they have implied meaning. They don't really mean how they appear. For example, if I say, John kicked the bucket. It doesn't have anything to do with bucket. It doesn't have to do, to, to do with kicking. So it's simply time to say that John is dead. So this is an uh, euphemism. A soft way to say things that will hurt people. So in this case, rock and hard place simply means hard decision to make. So he had hard, he had hard decision to make. That is option C. To be between a rock and a hard place, it means to be in very tense situation to take hard decision. And the next question: Are there is one of the Backs, backwoods men. And there is one of the backwood men. This means that. So you ask yourself, what does it mean to be a backwoods man, or what does backwoods men mean? Backwoods men simply means somebody that lives in a uh, distance and on that developed area. That is what it means to be backwoods men. Option A. He is one of those that live in a distance and underdeveloped area. Yes, that is correct. Because like I explained earlier, backwards may simply means uh, distance and underdeveloped area. Option B says, he is one of the active members of the society. No, that is not the meaning. C says, he is one of the honest men that lives in the society. No. And option D says, he is one of those that live in the most developed part of the city. 
This is simply like the opposite. So option A is the correct option. And the next question. The manager made disparaging remarks about the retiring officer. Disparaging remark. And this is under words and synonyms. Nearest in meaning. Disparaging simply means demeaning, insulting, or derogatory remark. A very bad remark. That is the meaning of disparaging. So the opposite is the synonym is not rude. It's not parochia. Parochia simply means narrow-minded. It is not cynical. It is derogatory. Derogatory means this, uh, demeaning, insulting, or critical on suffering. <laughs> so that is what it means. And let's see the next question. This one says, as soon as the secretary realized that she has made a mistake, she did everything to rectify it. So this is a common English. Let's rectify it. Let's rectify the issue. It simply means immediately she found out that there is a problem. She tried everything possible to correct the problem. So correct is the correct option, which is option D. And the next one, he is a stranger for a newspaper. He is a stranger for a newspaper. So this is under words and synonyms. Nearest in meaning. To be a stranger for a newspaper simply means to be a freelancer. And what does freelancer mean? It means to be independent. If you are a freelance writer, it means you are not attached to any company or business. You are on your own, you are unattached. You can get jobs from company A, from B, from C, from D. So you are free to work with anyone. So you are not attached. If he is a stranger for a newspaper, it simply means he is a journalist working independently with a media organization. So making option C the correct option, not financial, editor, or transporter. Okay? Alright, the next one. He spoke with his heart in his mouth. This means that he speaks dash. <laughs> so, uh, heart in his mouth simply means fear. He spoke with so much cowardice. Okay? You are fearful. He spoke fearfully. That is what it means for your heart to be in your mouth. That is the meaning of the idiomatic expression. So looking at these options, the correct option is B, with such unusual cowardice. Option A says courageously. That should even be the opposite. So the real meaning is, he spoke with unusual cowardice, with fear, with trembling. So, the next question. The two sprinters were running neck and neck. This means that they were running dash. To run neck and neck simply means to run at the same level, exactly the same level, exact level. That is what it means to run neck and neck. So what does that leave us? It leaves us with option A as the correct option. And the next question, when the man was caught by the police, he presented a bold front. Wow. This means that he faced the situation with boldness, with apparent boldness. So he was not trembling. He didn't face it with cowardice. He did not face it with his heart in his mouth, like we saw earlier. So in this case, he faced the situation with apparent boldness, making option C the correct option. Option A says he attacked the policeman boldly. No, he walked up to the policeman. No, he bravely attempted to give them a present. <laughs> no, no. So, look at it. Presented. D is trying to say present. So, it's bringing a word in the sentence to confuse you. So, don't be confused. Just know as many words as possible. Then try to be logical about them. Alright, let's see the next one. A site of the gas, ghastly accident. At the site of the ghastly accident, 
the poor woman's hair stood on end. <laughs> so for your hair to stood on to stand on air, or the woman's hair stood on air, it simply means the woman was frightened. She was afraid as the site of the ghastly accident. We have uh, ghastly accidents and fatal accidents. Fatal accidents is the one that involves death. So if accident occurs and someone dies, we simply say that it is a fatal accident. But if the accident is very serious, due to injury, a lot of problems, but no death, we say that it is a ghastly accident. So take note of those. So in this case, option D is correct. The woman was frightened. Option C says the woman was unmoved, though no, she wasn't unmoved. In fact, in the normal scenario, no woman will be unmoved <laughs> uh, at the scene of ghastly accident. No. Okay? Women are compassionate, so they are easily scared. Are uh, you women or girls? They are nice people. They are good people, okay? <laughs> Alright, look at this. It says, What a harmless thought he has. What a harmless thought he has. So, in this case, we are dealing with uh, West and Antonyms. West and opposite. So, harmless means it doesn't cause harm. In no cause. Okay? So, what is the opposite of harmless? It should be harmful. Looking at option A, pernicious, pertinent, pleasant, and perfect. The opposite is pernicious, which means harmful. Another opposite is inimical. Inimical means harmful. Something that is very, very harmful. And the next one. He is dash, kaduna, dash, and official assignment. So option A, he is in kaduna, on an official assignment. B, he is at Kaduna in an official assignment. C, he is in at Kaduna for an official assignment. And D, he is for Kaduna in an official assignment. One can be on an assignment and in a city. I am on an assignment. Is correct. You can be in the city. Yes, I am in a city in Lagos. I am in Lagos at mainland. So, being in the city is correct, and being on assignment is correct. So he is in Kaduna on an assignment. Option B is not correct because in an assignment is not correct. So you can be at the city and in the city, but the most correct one is he is in Kaduna on an assignment. So that is option A. And the next question. Everybody is allowed to dash his views on the state of affairs. Everybody is allowed to air his views. That is the correct option. To air your view means to make your opinion known openly or publicly. So on this matter, uh, this is what I think. I think the president should resign. So, you make everybody know your opinion. So, air his view is correct. Hear his view, no. Show his view or share his view, no. The correct thing is air your view. Let me air my view. So, that is the correct word. This one. Here is Mr. Odumosu who teaches English. Dash in our school. So, this is under spellings. So, you need to know spellings. Spellings and spellings. As you read, as you see words, make sure you know the spellings. Because sometimes you assume you know the spellings of certain words, and when it comes to <laughs> exam condition, you can't even spell them. <laughs> okay? For example, you see argumentation or exposition. You just assume, okay, exposition. But if you don't observe where to see the spelling, you don't know which one is correct. For example, give me this option pronunciation, 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 pronunciation. There is a high chance that, at least for some seconds, you'll be confused. Which one is really correct? Which one is correct? And the way we even say it, pronunciation, you will want to go with option B. <laughs> so, take note of all spellings as you read your notes. See the everything. Make sure you take note of spelling. And some words like pneumonia. Maybe I'm correct. So, this is pronounced pneumonia. So, for many persons, you will know that it has P. 
So taking note of the spelling and pronunciation of words will be very important for you to pass. For example, a word like communication, information, environment, accommodation. So in accommodation, you'll be wondering how many M do we have in accommodation? How many do how many does? So you see, so understanding spellings is very, very important. Very, very important. So let's say for example in accommodation, you see some spelling A C O some A C C O So this is the correct option. And in this case, we are dealing with a uh, pronunciation. So the correct spelling is option C pronunciation. Not pronunciation. <laughs> Get that? So that is correct. No spellings. The question uh, the next question says the employee, not the sales boy and his partner, that responsible. For the loss this is like the example i gave earlier as well as together with so you the subject should be taken into account so in this concord the employer comma not the sales boy and his partner that's responsible for the loss the subject is the employer so the subject is singular the verb should be singular option d is correct is the employer not the sales boy and his partner is responsible for the loss. So that is correct. Let's see the next question. Both questions are alternatives. You answer dash one, dash the other. So you are given two questions. And it says they are alternatives, meaning they are optional. So you can choose to answer either one or the other. So if you are given two uh, options or choices and you need to make one, we use either. But if you are given two options and you don't need to do any one, no one should happen, no one should, you should not go with anyone, you use neither. So either goes with or, either this or, then neither, neither this, no. So for two things, neither means you are not going with any of the two. Why either mean you are going with one of the two? So both questions are alternatives. It means you can answer either one or the other. So make it option A the correct option. Option B is wrong because you are answering at least one. If you're answering no one, neither will be correct. So option C is wrong because either does not go with no. Either goes with or. This is concord. Either or or words that go together. Neither, nor, together with, as well as, although this happened, yet, so although goes with, yet, okay, so I'll tell you more as they come. And in question number 28, it is high time we dash dash seeing her. When you see it is high time, the verb that should follow or the word that should follow should be past things. So, it is high time we stop is wrong. It is high time we stopped. So, pass. So, uh, it is high time, so there's something that should be done. And it is already a bit late. You're supposed to do something, but it is not late. So, it is high time we slept. It is high time we went. It is high time we stopped playing. It is high time we, we got over it. Okay? So, take note of the usage. And the next one, you can dash, you can have dash of these two books. Option A, either. Yes, when you have two things and you can have at least one of them, you use either. If neither we are in this sentence, it would still be correct, meaning you cannot have any of them. So for two things, we use this guy or this guy. None is for three or more. If you're talking about many books, I can say, okay, you can have none of these books. Or if you can have any of them, any is when there are many. Some is used for more than three, three or more as well. 
But since we are talking about two books, this and this are one we consider. Then this question, either Buntu or you dash dash to go. Either Buntu or you are to go. So use the verb that follows that is close to you. Either Buntu or you are to go. And the next one says, choose the correct interpretations of the statement given for question below. Interpretation. This one says, I know my onions. I know my onions. <laughs> you must have heard this in movies. I know my onions. You may not think it's even onions. So I know my onions. Onions. <laughs> it means to be very good at a particular subject. So you are good at a particular subject or topic or something. That is what it means to know your onions. To be good at something you practice in a particular field. So the best interpretation is option A. I know my job very well. So that is another word for I know my onions. To know your job or a topic or a subject or something very, very well. It is not to know your right. It is not to be clear of because of experience. And it is not being aware of your position. So the most correct option is option A. And this is another interpretation. America is the Mecca of the world. Mecca is somewhere people love to visit. So if America is the Mecca of the world, it means America is a place where people like to visit. So this makes option C the correct option. The next one, all the Nigerian footballers have itchy feet. Itchy feet means not static, always moving. So if all the footballers in Nigeria have itchy feet, it means they like to travel. So the footballers like to travel. So that is option C. Here it says, the footballers have insured feet, no. B says, the footballers use their feet to steal, no. D, the footballers like to play skillfully, no. And like I told you, any option that includes feet or itchy is most likely to be wrong when it comes to interpretation. The next one, Bob Risky is a fashion victim. Wow. Fashion victim means to dress gorgeously but without fitting at the end. So he or she dresses gorgeously without any fitting. That makes option B the correct option. So the next one, the next one, it says Mr. Santos La Liga is a dipsomaniac. We are looking for opposite in meaning. Who is a disponent maniac? Disponent maniac is simply a person who drinks alcohol. That is a disponent maniac. So what's the opposite? The opposite will simply be someone who doesn't drink alcohol. So let's see. A teetotaler is a person who never drinks alcohol. So that makes option A correct because we need to look for someone who never drinks alcohol. Option B, drunkard. A drunkard should be opposite the nearest in meaning. But we are not looking for word nearest in meaning. Rather, we are looking for opposite in meaning. C says, an hater of women. No, now. I'm looking about hater of women here. D says, a promiscuous woman. No, no, that's not what we are talking about. So it's a titular. Option A is the correct option. Okay, look at this question. The jollof rice served at the wedding reception was malodorous. Wow. It means it had unpleasant spell. Ma. So when you have ma after something, for example, ma function. Ma means it's not functioning well. So it's actually a preface for negative word. Ma function. Ma odorous. So it means it's not having good odor. So it has unpleasant odor or unpleasant smell. And since we are looking for opposite in meaning, the opposite should be pleasant. And next, when it comes to playing the piano, I am complete. I am completely ignoramus. 
Ignorance means you don't do something about playing piano. It means you are a novice. So the opposite should be professional or someone who knows something or who knows about something. So the opposite should be virtuoso, which means an expert. That is option B. And okay, the next one says every human being is vulnerable to communicable disease. This is nearest in meaning. When you are vulnerable to something, it means you are liable to something. It means you are susceptible to something. So liable is correct. That is A. The next one says, The student's union leader delivered his speech as tempo. As tempo. To deliver uh, a speech as tempo simply means to deliver without previous preparation. So you are not prepared previously, you just came to deliver the speech. So looking at the options, out of hand, accurately, off the cuff and courageously, off the cuff is correct. Because off the cuff means to deliver a speech or to say something without previous preparation, which is nearest in meaning to S tempo. Okay? So C is the correct option. And the next one. These policies have been espoused by the ruling party. Espouse means to adopt or support a belief. So if the policy has been espoused by the ruling party, it means it has been supported by the ruling party or adopted. So supported is correct. Uh, this says he was both a writer and a politician, but he was better dash dash a singer a he was better as if a singer b he was better like a singer c he was better as a singer and d he was better to be a singer uh, looking at this the most stable answer here is to govern the noun phrase is a singer so as is the most stable answer here and it is good to govern the noun phrase. So, but he was better as a singer. That is correct. Okay, look at this. He started his career as an dash teacher. This is under his spelling. So the correct spelling is A U S I L I A R Y. So auxiliary teacher, which means a teacher that is helping or that is an assist that is assisting. Assisting teacher. So that is auxiliary teacher. Option C. Look at this. His many years of success in legal practice. Dash didn't come out with challenges. A. Indeed didn't come out without challenges. B. But didn't come out without challenges. C. In spite of all. They didn't come out with challenges. And D, however, they didn't come out with without challenges. Uh, however, however is correct, yes. Because however is used when trying to include a point or buttress an old one with a comparison. You are trying to compare. Fine, he had successful years in legal practice. However, there were challenges. So we are trying to compare the sources and the things he had to pass through to achieve that success. So, however, is correct. This one says, Jide couldn't have said that. What does it mean? If I said John couldn't have said that, it means I trust John, I trust that guy. He won't say something like that. No, he won't. Remember, he said couldn't have said, not shouldn't have said that. Shouldn't have said simply means he said it, but he's not supposed to say or was not supposed to say it. But couldn't have said that means it is not likely. Did they say that? No, I'm not sure. It's not likely. So that is option C. And this one says, Bolu shall be the MC. Shall be. This means we don't have backup. We are certain that Bolu will be the MC. No backup. We are sure. We are making plans to make sure that he is the MC and no one else. 
So option A says, Bolu may be the MC. No, Sha didn't tell us other probability. So may is probability. So it's not conditional. It's not may. It's not probability. B says, no one else will be the MC. Yes, that if there is no Bolu, then no one else. Let's just see. Later in life, Bolu will become an MC. <laughs> That's off. D. Bolu may not be the MC. So looking at option A, B, A, C, and D, they seem weak. They don't really portray what Sha mean. So we'll go with option B. No one else will be the MC except Bolu. And see the next question. Bridget denied that she wasn't there. Denied, negative. She wasn't, negative. So negative, negative is positive. <laughs> this means Bridget was there. If she denied that she was not there, okay, they say you are not there. You say it's a lie. So that means you are there. So denied, negative, wasn't, negative. So it means she was there. Now, if Bolu denied that she was there, it simply means she was not there. If Bolu didn't deny that she wasn't there, it means she was there. Look, looking at the options, A. She confessed that she wasn't there. No. B. She owed up not to be there. C. She maintained she was there. Yes. D. She maintained she wasn't there. No. It means she maintained she was there. She denied that she wasn't there. So negative, negative, positive. Look at this. Had it, it rained, it wouldn't have been so bad. This means it rained and it got so bad. <laughs> so that's option D. Simple. Had it, had it, it rained, simply means it rained. It wouldn't have been so bad. It means it got so bad, although it wasn't supposed to be so bad. Chicken up. And look at this. If he had spoken up, he wouldn't have been given. If he had spoken up, he wouldn't have been given. This simply means he was given because he didn't speak up. If he had if he had spoken up, if he had spoken up means he didn't speak up. He wouldn't have been given means he was given. So yes, D is correct. He was given because he didn't speak up. So that is it. And another uh, place question comes a lot, it's on that question tag. He wasn't there, was he? When the statement is positive, the question tag will be negative. He shouldn't have done that, should he? He didn't do it, did he? He did it, did it he? We haven't met, have we? Isn't it? It happened, isn't it? She can come around, can't she? So, Positive, negative, negative, positive. Look at this. The police officer looks pudgy. Pudgy simply means tall. Uh, pudgy simply means fat and thick. Short and fat or thick. So the opposite in meaning should simply be tall and lean, which is option A. And the next question says. Procrastination is the energy is the enemy of progress. Procrastination. Procrastination means to slow down things, to delay things, to keep things for later. So we are looking for opposite in meaning to the word underlined, which is procrastination. So looking at the options, acceleration, laziness, hard work, and tiredness. Acceleration is the opposite of procrastination, meaning to do things fast, to hasten up. So that qualifies. To be the opposite. And the next question says, justice is difficult to enforce because people are unwilling to accept any loss of sovereignty. This is nearest in meaning. Sovereignty means a situation where you are self-sufficient, self-governance, you hold your side tight. So that is autonomy. Autonomy is nearest in meaning to sovereignty. And sovereignty is characteristics of any state. If you are doing government, if you are a government student. So a state should have sovereignty, a state should have government, there should be law and order, and so on. These are the properties of state or features of a state, as you may want to call it. So, and the next one says, 
There are still virtuous women in our society. Virtuous means upright. Someone with high level of moral standards, ethics. You have virtue. You take what is okay. You don't do things that are indecent or rubbish. Okay? So, virtuous is upright. Then this type of response is typical of a lazy teacher. Typical mean characteristics of a lazy teacher. James and Henry were at daggers drawn when I knew them. This means that they were always angry with each other. That is option A. When you are at daggers drawn with someone, it means you are always angry with the person. That is daggers drawn. And the next one says, Musa does not believe that there is poverty in Africa. He is a died in the wood capitalist. This means that Musa is an unbending capitalist. That is died in the mood. A serious one, an unbending, an unchanging, an unrepentant capitalist. Then look at this. I had dinner with Tony and Nick, and they talk shop the whole time. Talk shop. To talk shop simply means to talk about your job. That is the meaning of talk shop. Then the next one says, The beauty of Bimpe's garden shows that she has green fingers. The beauty of Bimpe's garden shows that she has green fingers. To have green fingers simply means to be good at growing plants. So naturally talented, naturally good at growing plants. The test shows that the lumps are malignant. So we are looking for words that is opposite in meaning. Malignant means something that is harmful, malevolent, injurious, inimical. That is the meaning of malignant. So the opposite is benign, which means not harmful. Okay? And malignant is also synonymous to cancerous. Harmful, killing, inimical. So, benign is the opposite of malignant. And the next question says, The children await a severe punishment. A severe punishment. We are looking for what nearest in meaning to severe. Severe simply means harsh, rash. So, the opposite is mild. Mild punishment. As you can see, in option C. And the next question. The man is very stingy to his wife's family. Stingy means tight fisted. You don't give. So what is the opposite? The opposite is simply generous, buoyant. You give out. And that is option A. Then this one says the king wore an appealing smile throughout the festival. Appealing means attractive smile, nice smile. Mm -hmm. So the opposite is disgusting, not appealing at all. And the next question. Choose the capital letter that have the emphatic stress. Choose the option to which the given sentence relates. Look at this. Dele's speech at the naming ceremony made his father angry. A. Did Dele's speech at the naming ceremony make his father happy? B. Did Wale's speech at the naming ceremony make his father angry? C. Did Dele's speech at the naming ceremony make his mother angry? D. Did Dele's sentence at the naming ceremony make his father angry? Now, <laughs> under emphatic stress or questions like this, this is what you do. Don't change any other thing except the one in capital letter. And as you are changing the one in capital letter, look for the opposite. So angry is in contrast with the emphatic word happy. So angry is emphasized. So you simply look for the opposite, which is happy. The correct option is A. The daily speech at the naming ceremony make his father happy. So every other thing remains apart from angry. So you look for the opposite of angry. Now look at the next question. The goose were delayed at the port due to negligence. So port is in capital letter. 
You simply say that. Look at the options. A. We are the goose delayed at the port due to accident. B. We are the goose delayed at the stop due to negligence. C. We are the goose delayed at the port due to negligence. D. We are the goose delayed at the port. So the correct one is option B. Since port is in capital letter, we look for opposite of the port. Then every other thing remains the same. So, where the goods delayed at the store due to negligence, so no longer port. So that makes B the correct option. And look at the next question. BC has become an indis indispensable member of the staff. So this is nearest in meaning. Indispensable means so important, so vital, or replaceable of a very high value. So looking at principal, vital, effective, and dedicated, vital is the most appropriate. It is the nearest in meaning. So that is option B. And the next question, a good leader is resolute in his decision. Resolute means firm. So you are resolute, you are firm, you are unleading, you are determined. So C is correct. Then this other question says, Mr. Brown is often described as an astute businessman. Astute means shrewd. Shrewd. We are in nearest in meaning. And shrewd means someone who is clever and quick. That is astute. 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 Shrewd. Shrewd. So nearest in meaning to astute is shrewd. And the next one says, the collector could not tell whether the painting was genuine or not. Genuine means authentic. So genuine, authentic. Doesn't necessarily mean expensive, reliable, or value. It can be expensive and still not genuine or authentic, meaning you have been scammed. Then this is under nearest in meaning. The perpetual smile of the little girl was infectious. A. Endless, B. Recurring, C. Charming, and D. Broad. Perpetual simply means continuously, recurring, charming. So, B is correct. Perpetual. When something is perpetual, it continues after a long period of time without interruption. In this case, endless and recurring are perfect synonyms. But because the this, this situation had to do with smile, Recording is a better option because smile cannot be endless. You keep smiling, it happens again. Okay? So you've gotten the reason we chose recording over endless. So we are filling in this gap. Since the fight, Joy and Gibbs have refused to talk to Dash. Since the fight, Joy and Gibbs, they refuse to talk to Dash. A themselves. <laughs> B, we, C, each other, and D, one another. In this case, we are talking about two persons. So when it is two persons, each other is correct. One another is used for three or more persons. Themselves mean among you. You are talking within yourself. So each other is correct since we are just talking about gift and joy. So they refuse to talk to each other, not they refuse to talk to themselves or one another. They are just two. And the next one says, We went home early. Didn't we? <laughs> so this is under question tag. This can also be replaced as, We did went home early. Since it's positive, so didn't we? Negative. So that is question tag for you. Look at this. No one is there to reply. Are they? So there is nobody, there is no one. So are they? No one. Are they? Is there anyone? So A is correct. And this is the plan for the party. Dash dash due to incorporation. A fell down. B fell through. C fell out. And D fell about. Out of all these, fair true is the correct to so fill in the gap, uh, the gap, and it is the only correct thing to use there. Fair true means 
fail to happen. But fair about is correct, actually, it means to laugh uncontrollably. But since we're talking about plan, so fair to simply means the plan failed to happen. We could not execute the plan. So take note of that. Now look at something. If I say I saw him stealing the meat and I saw him steal the meat, which one is correct? I saw him steal the meat is correct. Because it happens, it's not something that happens for hour. So similarly, I saw him cross the road is correct. Okay? I saw him jump. These are actions that happen fast, not years. So take note of that. Then I was in the rain. Yes, it's correct. I was in the rain. Not under the rain. I was in the rain. This one says the abeyance of school activities last semester was a reason for concern. Abeyance means temporary disuse or, or suspension. So the opposite of suspension or disuse is continuance to the continuance of school activities. That is the opposite. And the next question says, in Nigeria, it is a crime to plagiarize someone else's work. This time around, we are dealing with nearest in meaning. Plagiarism means to copy somebody's work word for word without even giving a reference. Like this teaching, you take it to your site or to your school as your own without even telling me. I write a book, you go there, copy the teaching word for word without telling me, without changing anything. That is called plagiarism. So another word for it is piracy. Piracy. So looking at these options, piracy is nearest in meaning to plagiarize. Pirate. That is option A. So that is it on likely use of English questions for jam. And this is the part one. Part two will be on the way to feature more comprehension passages and how to answer them, to feature uh, vowels, consonants, and rhymes. Also, I have other videos for words and synonyms set in jam, words and antonyms set in jam. You see them up below as links or check the description or comment to this video. I will share them. Words and synonyms, words and antonyms, idioms set in jam. If you can go through those words, synonyms, and idioms, plus what you've done, plus part two of this class, trust me, there is no way you will score, you will not score high in jam. So that is it. Why not subscribe to this channel for more amazing videos? And feel free to look at my other release videos across different subjects. You will find them extremely helpful. So thank you. I am Isaac. See you.